classroom, Richard Curtis. This is fun out here. What an entrance, Katrina. That was awesome. I'm not good enough to play. You're playing today. Jordan, Emily, you guys ready to do this? Yeah. Beat those teachers. Let's get them. Teachers, welcome to the show. Good to see you guys. And it's good to see you at home as well. Welcome in. Today, it's my three students to my right and my teachers to the left. They're about to go head to head. They're from Klinger Middle School in Bucks County, but officially in the classroom today. And you guys know the drill. We test the students and we test their favorite teachers. Pep rallies are always big. Today they showed up. What's up, guys? Look at that pirate out there. I'm loving it. $500 is on the line for the winning team today before we even meet our contestants. No one's ever ready for this, but we're going into a pop quiz. your buzzers. We have one minute and 30 seconds on the clock. Each correct answer will be worth 10 points. If you buzz in first, wait until your name is called to answer. If you get the question wrong, a contestant from the other team can buzz in and will have a chance to steal. They're officially in the city. They're from Southampton, PA. Let's get into it, Clinger. Here we go. What two letters are used for the abbreviation for the state of South Dakota? Emily. SD. SD is right. Students on the board first. Original cinnamon sugar and pepperoni are all varieties of what Annie Ann's hand-baked mall staple? First one in, Mr. Deisler. Soft pretzels? Yeah, pretzels, absolutely. Pretzel nuggets, depends on how you like them. How many basic sensory organs are in the human body? Emily. Six. Teachers for the steal. Mr. Fawnen. Five. Five is right. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. Extra credit question, this one's worth double. In the 1840s, immigrants from what country came to America to escape the potato famine? First one in, Mr. Fawnen. Ireland. Ireland. The Irish did, absolutely. Which chess piece can only move diagonally? Fawnen again. The bishop. The bishop is right, clearly a chess man. How many days are in the month of January? Fawnen again. <laughs> 31. 31, absolutely. He stays good. You're up to 60 points here, 50-point lead. Common, proper, concrete, abstract, and collective are all types of what part of speech? Mrs. Riley. Noun? Noun is right. In the NBA, the city of Phoenix is represented by what team? Mr. Deisler. The Suns? The Suns is right. In the TV series Paw Patrol, what is the name of the German shepherd who works as a police dog? Mr. Vaughn. Chase is on the case. You are on the case as well. <laughs> Nicely done. What U.S. state borders Minnesota to the east? The answer, Wisconsin. And that is it for Pop Quiz. A minute 30 goes quick. Emily Gordon Jordan and Katrina put up 10 points there in Pop Quiz. Teachers, you guys got 90 there. They got off to a good start, but I'm excited about what we have today because it's the teachers and students from Klinger Middle School in Southampton, Pennsylvania, home of the Klinger Clippers. How's that for a name? Love that. What do you say we meet some of our team members? Hi, I'm Emily. I'm in eighth grade, and the teachers are going down. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm in eighth grade, and it's time to let my inner nerd shine. Hi. I'm Katrina, and since there's a hurricane named after me, I'm going to blow you all away. I'm Mr. Deisler. I teach a class called Innovative Design and Manufacturing, and today the teachers are going to manufacture a win. Hi, I'm Mrs. Riley, and since our school puts such a focus on being kind to one another, I'll be sure to give the students a great big hug after they lose today. Hi, I'm Mr. Fawnen. My students call me Mr. F, and that's the grade the students are going to be getting in today's game. Oh, man, not a bad side of teachers and not a bad set of students either. You guys are so excited that you're here on the show today. Emily, Jordan, Katrina, out of all three of you, have any of you ever got a real detention in school? This is a good team. Now, I go to my teachers, have any of you? All three of them have, and that's why they're going to detention today. Let's play. Put your buzzers down, you'll work together on this one. This is how detention works. I will give one team a category. As a team, you will have 10 seconds to decide if you want to play or pass. If you choose to play and answer the question correctly, you can send any member of the other team to detention. If you get it wrong, the other team can send one of you. If you pass, the other team has to answer the question, and the same elimination rules apply. The first team to send everyone from the other team to detention will win 40 points. Okay, Klinger. Let's keep that detention off all three of your records, and I'm going to give you guys the first category. So let's see how lo you love social studies. Yes. You're going to play it? Okay.
Okay, here you go, guys. Good luck. On March 5th, 1770, British soldiers opened fire on American colonists, killing five of them in what deadly riot that paved the way for the American Revolution? Boston Massacre. Boston Massacre. The Boston Massacre. The incident on King Street. Absolutely, guys. They get it right, and they take the lead here in detention. Team Captain Emily, who are you guys going to choose? Mr. Up. Yeah. Mr. Lawden, yeah. he's the first one into detention, and this is actually a first for us as well. We've never had a building sub on the show before, so you're representing the substitutes, <laughs> and you can represent your way right into detention. Clearly, they love you, and you're in there first. So, <laughs> teachers, we go back to you. Category of space. Do you love it? Do you hate it? <laughs> uh, we'll let them do it. All right. See how well you guys with space. Okay. What is the first phase of the moon cycle that occurs when the moon's illuminated side is not visible because the moon is between Earth and the sun? You can yeah, talk about new it. Moon. New moon. New moon, they take the pass and they say, yeah, yeah, we'll prove it, and they prove that one. New moon. Okay. Mr. Deisler, Mrs. Riley, they passed you that one. One of them goes to the detention. Who's it going to be? Mr. Deisler. <laughs> Mr. Deisler out of the game. He's going to go any way he wants. He's taking the short route here. Nice job. You took the pass. And how about this one? Now the category goes back to you. You're still in control of the game. Mr. Dicer's trying to break detention over there. But he's comfortable. So now I give you this category. And this would be for the win if you keep it. Or the pass. Musicals. Yes. Uh, play. We're gonna play. According to the song from the musical Annie, you're never fully dressed without what? Smile. A smile. Yeah, a smile! <laughs> Mrs. Riley goes to the tension. How about it? A smile and a sweep down the line. Katrina, Jordan, and Emily get it done. I'm putting those points on your board. Get you up to 50 already for the game. We're playing, baby. I hope you guys are too. When we come back, how well do you guys draw? Pretty well? Hopefully, because our class is coming up next. I have the sign. I, guys, I have the sign, which makes me basically a part of the squad. Why am I excited? Because the Clippers, the Cli uh, Clipper Clingers, are some of the most world-renowned cheerleaders of all time. Hit me with the cheer. I want to hear it. Let's go! That was pretty good! <laughs> we got this guy in the house. We got it all. It's big day on the classroom right now. Clear Middle School. They're rocking and rolling. They're from Bucks County. Look, the audience, they already know they're in the game, but teachers and students, they're playing well, too. Teachers have 90 points on the board. Students are right there with 50. We're continuing this game right now. Get the best pens and pencils you guys have, because we're going to our class! <laughs> Okay, cards are ready, the game board is too, and here's how this game works. Each team selected one player to draw, and the trailing team's gonna go first. I have the students up here now. Jordan, are you an artist? Yeah. Okay, well hopefully that comes out and helps you here. You're gonna have five seconds to draw. Your teammates are gonna have 10 seconds to guess. Okay, if they get it right, it's gonna be 30 points in the first round. If the team guesses incorrectly, I'll give you a couple more chances, but the points decrease. Now, what are you drawing? There's two cards here. There could be anything on the inside. So do your best. Are you red or blue? Red. You take red. I love it how confident you are. You stand back here, open that up immediately, look at your word as I uncap. Okay, you feeling good with that? Yep. I'll take this. Five seconds on the clock starts right now. Okay, stop right there. Pretty well done. What are we looking at, guys? You have 10 seconds to talk about it. A couch. A couch? Couch is right! 30 points! Goes on to the score. <laughs> Jordan, you just punched your hands and said, thank you. Yeah. No, the drawing was excellent. They, they, they should be thanking you on that one. So I'll tell you what, we're going to switch out. Mrs. Riley, come on up. Jordan, you go sit in Mrs. Riley's seat right back there. Okay. So I clean this board and give you your word here. And you're going to stay right back here. Oh, goodness. So I uncap your pen. Do you love that? When's the last time you doodled? Mm, long time ago. I'll take the card. Oh. Here we go. Good luck, five seconds starts right now. Stop, okay, woo! <laughs> woo. Sorry. 
That was a quick five seconds. <laughs> what are we looking at? Skiing. Let's go with who's skiing or sledding. Is he sitting or standing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's having fun. What do you want to say? Um, it's up to you. Skiing? Skiing is right. They get 30 points out of this score. I thought you were going sledding there for a second. But to answer your question, they were having fun. So there you go. And I hope you guys are home, too. I'll tell you what. I got points flying in every direction right now. We're going to add more. Extra credit is getting put in right now. We're going to ask one extra credit question today. Both teams will have one minute during the commercial break to write down their answers. They get it right, we're going to add 10 points here. Score 120 to 80. But here's your question. In the NHL, what team is based in North Carolina? I thought it was warm there. I can't believe they have a hockey team. Do you know the answers? I hope you guys do. They're in the NHL. Put it right here. We'll see you when we come back. Today we have students and teachers from Klinger Middle School in Box County. Teachers, you're doing well, 120 20 points for you guys. And students, you should be so proud too. You got 80 points on the board and you should be smiling as we continue this game where we both learned that these sides can absolutely draw. They both got 30 points last round. And we threw a little extra credit into the mix with this question. In the NHL, what team is based in North Carolina? Students, we're gonna start with you. Hockey fans, I should ask first. No. No. Okay, really that makes not. this question just a teensy little bit more difficult. Let's see what you guys came up with. <laughs> the Cardinals. The Cardinals <laughs> was a good guess, but not correct. And we go over to our teachers, Mr. D. We're gonna go with the Hurricanes. That's what we were looking for. Yeah, the Carolina Hurricanes. So that gets you up to 130 points right there. Students right there with 80. We have $500. Emily, a big old check could be coming your way. If you guys get that, what are you gonna do with it? We're going to donate it to the Principal 200 Club. What's that? It's um, in a program that uh, like <laughs> rewards good behavior with incentives, such as gift cards and other things. Yeah, that's a not a bad reason to behave, right? All right, well, good place for you guys to put it. And uh, teachers, where are you going to put it? Uh, ours is going to go towards our school's One Book, One School initiative. Awesome. Guys, both sides have a great place to put this. That's where the money's going. Who's going to win this thing? We have two games left to find out. Picture Day takes us next. <laughs> Grab your buzzers. You're all going to need them for this round. We're going to show you a picture of a famous person, place, or thing that we covered with boxes. I'm going to give you three clues one at a time. With each clue, remove three more boxes. You buzz in first, you get it correct. Ten points gets added to your score. But if you get it wrong, remember the other side's going to have a chance to buzz in and seal those points. Hopefully it doesn't happen. We have three pictures today. Here's your first with clue number one. Good luck, everybody. Here it is. This person was a Quaker who lived in Philadelphia. Um, ben Katrina. Benjamin Franklin? Is that Benjamin Franklin? Incorrect. Teachers for the steal if you'd like. Otherwise, I'll give you clue number two. We move to clue two. She was devoted to the women's rights movement. Mr. Fawden. Uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Is that Elizabeth Cady Stanton? Incorrect. Students for free guess here. Otherwise, I give you clue three. We're going to go clue three. Here we go. She was the author of Discourse on Women and helped organize the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society. Here's the answer, guys. We're looking for Lucretia Mott was the answer there. So no points gets awarded. And we move to picture number two. Let's cover it up with some boxes. And I give you this clue. This person has a prominent scar between his eyebrows. Next clue. This actor is from New Zealand. Nothing there. As we go six free boxes, I'm going to give you three more, making it nine with this final clue. He stars as Archie in the hit show Riverdale. Uh, Katrina? It's like a... It's... Baby... Cow or something like... Teachers for the steal. 
No answer, Katrina, you were right on. It was KJ Appa. You had the letters flying there, you just couldn't put them together. So no points gets awarded there, and we move finally to this last picture. No retakes here, let's see how well you do. Clue number one, it's a popular tourist destination. Buzzer, stay silent. We go with clue number two. This continental divide, known as the Great Divide, runs through it. Mr. Fawnett. Rocky Mountain National Park. Is that the Rocky Mountain National Park? That's it. Yeah, that's the Rockies. There you go. Rocky Mountains get you up to 140. And you guys take the last picture on picture day, and that closes it out on picture day. Hopefully you guys took a good picture. Now, both teams, you guys are in this game. Teachers 140, students sitting with 80, but it comes down to 300 points, which are up for grabs in final exam. <laughs> your topic it's all about fictional places all right i'm gonna ask both teams three questions about our final exam topic they get it right it's worth 100 points students obviously you want to beat your teachers here today did you think you would have 80 points on the board at this point no no so you're feeling like you did better than you anticipated yeah and now you're yeah. ready to take it home in final exam do you guys usually yeah. study i think every teacher wants to know do you usually study for final exam yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's good. So hopefully you studied today with fictional places, which you didn't know the topic about, but now you can cram during commercial break. We're going to write down your answers during the commercial break. Hopefully you get them right. All three, each one you get correct, it's going to be 100 points. Here we go, guys. These are your questions. The San Francisco Institute of Technology is a school that Hero attends in what 2014 movie? Fictional places, question two. This is a fun one. Inkopolis, Octa Valley, and Booyah Base are fictional places in what Nintendo video game series first released in 2015? Fictional places, final question. Jamie Kelly writes about her experiences at Mackerel Middle School in what popular Jim Benton book series? They're your questions. Each correct answer, 100 points. 60 seconds, that's it. Not a second longer. Commercial look at Katrina. She's already visualizing this win. Will it be Jordan and Emily or teachers? Will they keep that victory in their spoils? Well, I'll tell you what. You go to commercial, we come back. We crown a champion, but I want your school. And here's how they can be a part of the show. Does your school want to be part of a game show pitting students against teachers? If you're a principal or an authorized school official, go to theclashroom.com for more information on how to get on the show. and teachers from Klinger Middle School going head to head. It's grown adults versus eighth graders. And those eighth graders said, we're smarter than you. Well, they're behind in points right now. Teachers, you hold the 140 to 80 advantage, but we're playing a great game. And we learned the topic today is final exam fictional places. So before we went to break, three questions. Each correct and they get is going to be 100 points. We're going to get right into this with question number one. Good luck to both teams. The San Francisco Institute of Technology is the school that Hero attends in what 2014 movie? Students, you are behind. So we'll start with you. Katrina? Big Hero 6. Big Hero 6 is right. Gets you up to 180. Katrina, I met your grandma in the audience. She was just clapping really loud when you said that. So nicely done. Mr. Fonin, big Hero 6 fan? Big Hero 6. Yes, he is. There you go. Gets him up to 240. Well done, guys. And we move to question number two. Inkopolis, Octa Valley, and Booyah Base are fictional places in what Nintendo video game series first released in 2015? Students, again, you're still down at 180, but Jordan? Splatoon. Splatoon is right. She gives a fist bump. Are you a video game player, Jordan? Are you a video game player? Yes. So that came in helpful right there. All right, well, hold on. Mrs. Riley, are you a video game player? Uh, no. Hashtag one clinger. Hashtag one clinger. If you're watching the show, tweet her, tell her good job. That's a good hashtag, too. One clinger. And how about this? Students just flipped the script on the teachers and are now in the lead. 
This show comes down to our final question. Will it be the students or will it be the teachers? Here's your question. Jamie Kelly writes about her experiences at Mackerel Middle School in what popular Jim Benton book series? We started a pop quiz today. The students were behind 90 to 10. It's been a, it's been a long road back here. Mr. Deisler, let's see your answer. If this is wrong, my son will not like me. Sorry, you're a wimpy kid. Stay right there. Emily, let's see your answer. Dear Dumb Diary. Dear Dumb Diary or Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Ladies and gentlemen, one of these answers is correct. The other, incorrect. The winner of the classroom today is... Students win the game and Dear Dumb Diary and complete the comeback. They have beaten their teachers and here comes the big old check. $500 is going back with you guys. Clinger Middle School has done it. They upended their teachers. What a comeback, guys. Congratulations. They played a great game. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on The Classroom. What a comeback, Katrina, Jordan, Emily, great job. The fun continues wherever you are. Follow The Classroom on social and keep watching. Weeknights at 6.30 p.m. on Fox 29.